the uh, terrorist Woo! massacre a year yeah. ago. It's actually um, coming up the one year anniversary of the Pittsburgh massacre, and I kind of wanted to talk about that. And um, I know it's not exactly letting the mood too much with you know the uh, the kind of fun aspect of comics, but um, I think um, this is something I want to like sort of uh, convey um, via this comic. Uh, this is a comic I drew of uh, Barry Weiss. Um, uh, Barry Weiss intervenes in a synagogue shooting. Don't worry, everybody, I convinced him left-wing Jews are the real anti-Semites. Uh, for those unfamiliar, Barry Weiss is a New York Times opinion uh, editor and columnist, uh, currently on a nationwide tour for a book equating the unprecedented rise in white supremacist violence with the danger posed by the American left, because the American left supports Palestinian rights and specifically vilifying Jews on the left, whom she says are traitors, self-haters, and anti-Semites. Or circumcision reversers, that's one of her lines about the Jewish left. How we're like the circumcision reversers of antiquity, because as we all know, all the cool kids are intact. <laughs> Here's an earlier comic juxtaposing what Trump has said about Jews and what Weiss has said about Jews, direct quotes. It's alarming how similar they are. Trump said, I think any Jewish people that vote for a Democrat I think it shows either a total lack of knowledge or a great disloyalty. You vote for a Democrat, you're being very disloyal to Jewish people, and you're being very disloyal to Israel. And only weak people would say anything other than that. Weiss. As many well-intentioned people look to understand why a very small but very vocal group of Jews seems as deeply opposed to Jews. Sorry if it's misogynistic, the intonation, it's not deliberate. Um, it's just my general voice for other people. Uh, uh, to as many of our community's enemies. These Jews ought to be understood in context as part of a long history of left-wing anti-Semitic movements that successfully conscript Jews as agents in their own destruction. Before you say, wow, you know, he's uh, obsessed with Barry Weiss, it's a bit creepy and disturbing, um, I just want to say it's because in the midst of our white supremacist nightmare today, she is consistently elevated far right-wing voices while demonizing voices fighting fascism in America. And also she's called me a Nazi, and therefore there is a certain level of grudge. <laughs> I promise not to go on a polemic now, but I want to use this comic as a sort of anchor to talk about the anxiety of the current moment and the depths that we are drawing from. I was extremely anxious drawing this comic, and emotionally it depleted me a bit. I want to explore why. Um, obviously, first and foremost, it's a guy in a synagogue, and that's horrifying. And also it was risky because uh, it was entering Barry Weiss's domain. She grew up in Pittsburgh, that was her synagogue, uh, and she opens her book uh, on anti-Semitism with the actual shooting, using it as an, both an anchor and a shield of authenticity as she pivots to the other threat that we face. But that very exploitation was one of the reasons I wanted to draw it. But I had certain rules when drawing the comic. I would not draw bodies because that would, that would just, for me, that was crossing a line. I would not specify Pittsburgh, and I wouldn't draw the full face of the shooter because I felt, again, that would be crossing something. But I did include a hint. The Tree of Life synagogue is named after a Jewish symbol, the Tree of Life, you know, literally, um, which in a sad twist is also a symbol of remembrance because synagogues throughout the world have remembrance pla plaques for members of the community who have passed away, and often they are arranged in the form and the design of a Tree of Life. And so in my comic, I included a hint in the upper right, both as remembrance of those who were murdered with each leaf as sort of a plaque and also as a whole as a reference to the Tree of Life synagogue, but upstaged literally by her grotesque inversion of the threats we face. I included other hints in the drawing, not related to Pittsburgh, but related to our topsy-turvy world in which anti-fascists are demonized while white supremacists are shooting up synagogues. In the upper left is a liturgical phrase from Psalms, Mi mama blaming the left. Anyway, I was very anxious when drawing this comic. Every line was painful. Uh, it was like diving into the depths in, in another sense, immersing myself in the infested whirlpool of what is happening in the Trump era. And also I was anxious because I was racing against time, Rosh Hashanah was coming up, and for the first time in generations, American Jews were heading into this uh, season, um, you know, actually fearful that there could be another attack, even in their own place of worship. I didn't want, you know, to have it come out right at that time, so I actually finally got out like maybe a week in advance. So I was really laboring over the interior, and I hate drawing interiors in general. I'm not really good with like architectural forms. I much prefer uh, flesh, um, uh, as might be uh, apparent in my work. Uh, but it wasn't just that. I realized that this is my first time drawing a synagogue uh, since my dad passed away a year and a half ago. So basically, I'm going to talk uh, half uh, this little uh, presentation is going to be about massacres, and half is about my dad passing away to cover all the bases of despair here, um, because that's what comics are for. 
Um, but I do think on some level, drawing a synagogue with a massacre in the background and my father in the deeper background, this, if you will, became a deeply emotional act. Just drawing the pews brought back uh, even the smells of the prayer books uh, from my dad's synagogue from my childhood. Books that my sister and I would be staring at when we were sitting in the pews listening to the sermons. Oh, my dad was a rabbi. I don't know if I mentioned that. So everyone knows that about me. My dad was a rabbi. Uh, yeah, I forgot that part. Yeah. Uh, anyway, while drawing it, my mind kept going back to this unfinished comic I once uh, started drawing about my father. And when I say unfinished, I just drew this. Maybe, uh, well, actually, it was like a little under 10 years ago because it was based on something that happened uh, in 2009. Here's a sharper scan. Um, it was a planned story, but the only thing I actually ever drew was this, and the only text was up on top, not even able to fit in the panel, reading, my father is crying and telling me his fant. I'm supposed to say fantasy. Because my father and I had a catharsis later in his life, uh, on the phone 10 years ago, on Father's Day actually, we struggle uh, for, throughout my adulthood, as many children and parents do. Not everybody's struggle I know is about you know um, Israel and Jewish birth rates, but still, um, after my parents got divorced when I was five, my dad was panicked about losing control, specifically of our Jewish upbringing. So in his fantasy, um, I was having a bar mitzvah, and he wasn't invited because my mom had kidnapped me and my sister. And uh, you know, metaphorically or spiritually or in some sense, we were we were away from him. And in his fantasy, at the last minute, in the midst of my bar mitzvah ceremony, he bursts in and demands an aliyah, uh, being called up to the Torah. And he gets it. He puts on the talis and he goes up to the bima, the stage area, and he gets called to the Torah. That's from my actual bar mitzvah. It's uh, a lot like uh, the ending of The Graduate, only <laughs> stopping the wedding and running off with the bride, he's, uh, ensuring his centrality as my Jewish role model. It was an odd subject uh, for cathartic Father's Day confession because it wasn't about rescuing me from the perils of secularism, but about spotlighting himself uh, when he felt like everything was slipping away from him. But it was sort of a desperate way of explaining why he'd acted the way he'd acted my whole life. He was literally calling from the depths. I never drew this comic because it was so fraught and painful, and I don't know if I ever will. Here's another undrawn or unfinished comic. Uh, this is when he started um, going downhill physically. Um, and it was about a visit to the hospital. Uh, first of all, you can see me in the upper left there. I do not like drawing myself. Um, oh, I don't, it's not that I don't like drawing myself. I don't like drawing myself so many times that it requires a story or a graphic novel. Um, and also, you know, I was trying to mimic his way of talking, which was very intense and repetitive, and um, I think OCD in, in a clinical sense and also in a non-clinical sense. But um, the, it, it, I don't know if it transferred that well to the, to the uh, visual form. Um, you can see here. Yeah, I mean, basically, he's talking about stools uh, in this thing um, because they were trying to figure out what was going on. Um, so another one, unfinished. Um, and I bring all this up in reference to the Barry comic, um, not to make it like, oh, you know, Barry's my dad. Anywhere near. Um, I bring it up to explain what was going through my head while drawing the lines, every single line in this comic, the anxiety of this moment in time and the anxiety of some of these old demons. Comics arise from the depths. And just to end with that psalm again, from out of the depths I call to you. Kafka said that writing is a form of prayer. The comics I feel represented here tonight, the comics I like, the comics I try to make, um, and the comics that I sometimes am unable to finish, are the kind of prayer reflected in that psalm. Diving into the depths and discovering or capturing something, sometimes ugly, sometimes beautiful, sometimes both, always a form of truth, and bringing it to the surface to our common consciousness. Thank you. Woo!